In today's discussion, we are going to tackle about a brief overview of the poor Maxwell's equation plus the derivation for the value of the speed of light. And to begin with, let's have the Maxwell's equation in integral form. As you can see, there, this is the poor Maxwell's equation. It, it, it is all about gas law for electric field, gas law for magnetic field, Faraday's law of induction, and Ampere's law. So, let's have some brief overview about these four equations. And let's begin with the gas law for electric field. So, in this equation, as you can see, it is the integration of electric field that dA, which is also equal to Q and close over the permittivity of space. So, how it happens? So, to have some discussion of that, let's say we have a positive charge here. Let's say we have a positive charge. And... A, then draw a Gaussian surface. Let's draw a Gaussian surface here. And that electric field emanating from this distance from the charge. So, since we have a positive charge here, then our electric field is moving outward. And that electric field emanates is now multiplied to the surface area of that Gaussian surface. So, therefore, we arrive at this equation E in the integration of E dot dA. And what you notice here in this equation that the movement of the electric field depends on the charge enclosed on the Gaussian surface. Therefore, it is also equal to the charge enclosed over the permittivity of the space. Now, let's go to the second Maxwell's equation which is the gas law for magnetism. Now, in this illustration, let's say we have a magnet here. Let's say we have a magnet and that magnet as a north pole and the south pole. And the magnetic field line is going from North Pole to South Pole. So, from North Pole to South Pole. Now, if we put Gaussian surface here, let's say we put Gaussian surface here. Okay. So, let's say we put Gaussian surface here to the magnetic field present due to the magnet. We can say that the magnetic flux here, the magnetic flux entering that Gaussian surface is also equal to the magnetic flux leaving that surface, that Gaussian surface. Therefore, that integration, that magnetic field times dA is equal to zero. That is the Gauss law for magnetism. Now, let's go to the third equation, which is the Faraday's law of induction. And this is the equation for that one. And to imagine this equation, let's have a conductor loop. Let's say we have a conductor loop. Let's say we have this one, a circle. So that conductor loop is a continuous loop that allow current to flow. And let's assume that there's a precharge that is stationary there, okay? That there is stationary here. There's a precharge that is stationary here. And let's imagine that there is a magnetic field going to the loop in this direction. So, for example, that is the magnetic field. Now, what happens when the flux through loop changes? So, this is what we are now referring to. What happens if that magnetic flux changes? Okay, and remember, the equation for magnetic flux is this one is equal to BA. Okay? Now, that changes in magnetic flux. Let's say we have changes in a certain period of time. And because of that changes, it causes an electric field to exist inside a conductor. Okay? Let's focus on this equation. 
if there is a changes here in the magnetic flux over a certain period of time, it creates an electric field inside the conductor. Okay? And if we integrate the electric field, okay, this electric field inside the conductor times the length along the conductor, it is equal to the voltage created around the loop or the EMF, which is also equal to the change in magnetic flux around the loop. Okay, that is the Faraday's law of induction. Now, let's go to the Ampere's law. This, this is the fourth equation of Maxwell's equation. It said that if you have current wire, for example, you have a current wire here. So, there's a current moving that direction. So, it carries a current. Now, imagine that we have a circular region here. Okay, imagine that there is a circular region here. So, if we integrate this magnetic field, Based on this equation, if we integrate this magnetic field times the length of this imaginary circle, we now have this equation. We have the permeability of space times the permittivity of space times the plus permeability of space times the current enclosed in the loop, okay? In simple say, allows magnetic field to exist. So that is the Ampere's law. So that, we all know, based on that brief overview, that four Maxwell equation tackles or discuss electric field and magnetic field and how they interact with each other. Okay? Now, that you already know the basic info about the Maxwell's equation, we are now ready to develop the basic ideas of electromagnetic waves and their relationship to principle of electromagnetism. So, how it happens? By simply deriving the speed of light. Now, we can start this derivation using an XYZ coordinate. So, let's draw a, an XYZ coordinate. Okay, this is the XYZ coordinate. And let's say that there is a uniform electric field in Y direction. Okay, there is a uniform electric field in Y direction. And let's say that there is a uniform magnetic field in Z direction. And let's say we have a wave front perpendicular to electric field and magnetic field moving at constant speed C in X direction. So it is moving in X direction. So with a constant speed. And that value of C is the one that we are looking for. And in overall... That phenomenon is a rudimentary electromagnetic wave, or we can say as a plane wave. Now, since we already have a convention or an orientation for this one, now let's us now verify our wave. The wave, if it satisfies the Maxwell's first and second equations about gas laws for electric field and magnetic field. So, to do this, we have this gas law in electric field and magnetic field. So, first, we have to draw a XYZ coordinate, as you can see here in the figure. And this figure is borrowed on the university physics books. So, as you can see here, we have XYZ coordinate. And we have the electric field, uniform electric field, pointings on positive Y direction and the Uniform magnetic field pointings on the positive Z direction. Since the next step that we do is we put a Gaussian surface, the one in the violet one. We put, we enclose that electric field and magnetic field in a Gaussian surface. Now, in gas law in electric field, it states that 
it is equal to this one, right? We have e dot da is equal to q enclose over the permittivity of space. Now, since in this equation, the q enclose, there is no q enclose or there is no charge present. So, what we have is we have zero charge divided by the permittivity of space. So, we have zero. So, there is no electric flux present. So, there is no electric flux or there is zero electric flux here. Now, in terms of the magnetic field, so we have this one, B dot DA. As you can see, the magnetic field is moving, moving away to the Gaussian surface. So, it is leaving. So, we have a zero magnetic flux. Now, to satisfy and take note to satisfy the Maxwell's first and second equation, the electric field and the magnetic field must be perpendicular to the propagation. Okay, to the it is it must be perpendicular to the x1, to the x to the positive x direction. Or means the wave must be transverse. Okay? That's the basic explanation of the first and the second Maxwell's equation in relation to our waves. Now, let's go to the Faraday's law, which is, I think, the first important part on deriving the speed of light. So, it is Faraday's law. Okay? As you can see here, the equation for Faraday's law is this one the integration of e dot dl which is also equal to negative change in magnetic flux over a certain period of time and to understand this and in it relations to our waves let's use this figure which is i borrow to the university physics books now to test whether our waves satisfy this equation we apply this rectangle name EFGH. So, this is the rectangle EFGH. So, this is the 3D view. Now, let's put on the side view, okay? This is the side view. This is, this rectangle lies on the XY plane. So, it has a height of A and a width of change in x as you can see here the change in x now let's get the corresponding values of e dot dl and this negative or change in flux magnetic flux over a certain period of time into our wave okay but to begin with that let's first have this left side equation the integration of e dot dl. So, let's get the other values for or the corresponding value of this one to our wave. Okay? So, to have that, let's have this one. So, we are looking for the corresponding value of this one. As you can see, now let's apply the Faraday's law to take the vector area. As you can see, this is the vector area. This is the rectangle EFGH and we have a highlight value here which is in color violet. This is the vector area. And that vector area is pointing in the C direction, which is parallel to magnetic field. As you can see, this blue one is the magnetic field. And that vector area is parallel to the magnetic field. So it is pointing away from the page. And since this vector area is pointing around the page, and if we use the right-hand rule, the, therefore, we integrate E dot DL, this E dot DL, counterclockwise around rectangle. So, as you can see in this figure, that one, that movement is in counterclockwise using the right-hand rule. Now, as you can see, 
we are focused on finding the electric field and at this one let's move counterclockwise in this side we have ef the electric field is zero so it doesn't contribute to the integral and in this side the side fg and the sine he here is either zero or perpendicular to dl so it doesn't contribute again to the integral so what you notice here is that only side gh as you can see here contributes to the integral why because there is an electric field present here and this pink one is the electric field okay and since this line gh has a dl and it is moving downward while the electric field is moving upward they are in opposite direction so our corresponding value for that e dot dl we have a negative here because the electric field here and the dl is moving on an opposite direction so we have a negative sign here and let's use the convention e for the electric field and times dl our dl here is this one the line gh and that side gh is also equal to the height which is a so let's use a for this one so the corresponding value for our wave of this e dot dl is equal to negative ea okay now let's solve for the right side of the Faraday's law which is all about the change in magnetic flux over a certain period of time and to understand it let's use again this picture the side view and picture as you can see our magnetic field here is in the c component as you can see here the blue one it is moving away from the page so it is in a positive c direction and during that time interval dt during the time interval the wave front moves in distance c dt so this is the wave front so it is moving at the distance c dt now let's put let's look at this area vector here the one with the violet one let's zoom it out as you can see let's redraw it again we have this one pa as you can see the side of this da is also equal to cdt right so we have cdt here and the height of that one is also equal to a that one right this is also equal to a so we have a a here and remember our equation for the change in magnetic flux is this one so we have this one is equal to magnetic flux times area and based on this figure, our, the area vector is parallel to magnetic field. And we have a rectangle. So if we further simplify it, we have the change in magnetic flux is equal to the magnetic field times the area. So by this time, we have a rectangle. So we have the length, which is the A, times the width, which is the C, D, T. Right? Now, if we divide dt at both sides so we have now this one the change in magnetic flux over a certain period of time equals to b a c so we have now get the corresponding value of this equation to our wave so we have bac after knowing that we can now substitute the values we obtained a while ago to the Faraday's law to the third maxwell's equation so we have again this one right e dot dl is equal to the negative G 
change in magnetic flux over a certain period of time. And what we notice is that the integrals, the corresponding value of this integral form is negative Ea, right? Based on our previous discussion. And this one, the corresponding value of this one is also equal to BAC. So we have negative BAC. Now, let's further simplify it. Let's divide negative A at both sides so that we can cancel this one. Cancel, 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 cancel. So, what we have now is E is equal to C B. So, that is the electromagnetic wave and vacuum in terms of the Faraday's law. So, let's remember this one because it plays a very important part on deriving for the value of the speed of light. But first, Let's set aside this one and let's go to the Ampere's law. Okay. Again, the equation for the Ampere's law, at, like what we know, is this one. Okay. This one. But let's assume, let's assume that the induction current here is zero. So the I enclosed is zero. So it is zero. So what we have now, since I enclosed is zero, yeah, B dot DL is equal to 0 plus this one. Let's copy this one. So, in final, we have Ampere's law in this Maxwell equation in this form. B dot DL is equal to the permeability of space times the permittivity of space times the change in electric flux over a certain period of time. So that is our final equation. And again, like what we did on the Faraday's law, let's use or let's get the corresponding value of this side and this side to our waves. Okay? But first, let's get the corresponding value of this one. Okay? And again, this figure, the one that we are going to use, this is the 3D view, and this is the side view. Is I borrow it on University of Physics. So, the picture was on University of Physics, so credits to the University of Physics books. Book, rather. So that one. Now let's use or let's get the per side or the left side of the Ampere's law. That's the cor let's get the corresponding value. Okay. Now on this diagram, we use rectangle again EFGH, but this time it lies on XC plane. So XC plane. As you can see, let's focus on the area vector here on our area vector and it is pointing away from the page and it is towards the positive y direction and if you use right hand rule what you notice is that it is moving again in a counterclockwise direction okay and let's explore more on the figure as you can see this pink area here is electric field it is pointing away from the page and it is in positive y direction and the blue downward here moving downward is the magnetic field okay this one now let's go back again to the rectangle let's move in the rectangle so it is the integ we integrate e dot d b dot dl in counterclockwise so in line ef inside ef our magnetic field is zero so it doesn't contribute to our integral and line fg line fg and line he is either zero or perpendicular to dl so it doesn't contribute to our integral and the one 
or the side that only contributes to our integral is this side GH because there is a magnetic field present in that area and it is parallel to the movement of the magnetic field. As you can see, the magnetic field is moving downward and that GH, the DL here, is moving downward. So that, having said that, we have now a positive one. And let's use B for the magnetic field. And since times DL, but in terms of wave, we can see that this DL, this side has a height of A. So let's use A. So we have this one. Therefore, the corresponding value of this integral of b dot dl is equal to ba in terms of our waves. Now, we already solved for that one. Let's solve for the other part of the equation. So what is the corresponding value of that in terms of wave? Now, let's sum again this one, this area one with a vector area let's zoom out again this one so it plays a very help a big help on our derivation so we have da here as you can see its width is cdt okay that is its width and our height here is this one a so we have a with this one and since we are now talking about the electric field that area vector is pointing away from the page and pointing in the positive y direction therefore it is a parallel to electric field so so therefore we now use the equation for the change in electric flux okay let's use and we all know that the equation for the change in electric flux or in electric flux is electric field times the area okay let's reuse it is equal to the electric flux electric field times in this figure in this figure our area or our figure is a rectangle so the area is length times width so the length is a and the width is c d t so let's write a times c d t now let's divide d t both sides okay we can cancel this one so what we have now is we get e a c as our value corresponds to change in a certain period of time. So, is, this is equal to E, A, C. Now, that we already get the values, now we can substitute it to Ampere's law or to the Port Maxwell's equation. So, we have again this one b dot dl or b time magnetic field times the dl equals to permeability of space times the permittivity of space then we have this one that change in electric flux now the corresponding value of b dot dl is ba right positive BA and the corresponding value of change in electric flux is EAC now we can further simplify it let's divide A both sides so let's divide A both sides so we can cancel this one so now what we have now is we have B is equal to mu naught epsilon naught E C. Now, we derive the electromagnetic wave in vacuum using the Ampere's law. Okay? 
Now that we already derived the electromagnetic wave in Faraday's law and the electromagnetic wave in Ampere's law in a vacuum, we can now play on that equation. Again, let's rewrite those equations. I think it is a very helpful one. So, the first one we get on the Faraday's law is E equals CB, right? And B is equal to the permeability of space times the permittivity of space times E C. Using that two equation, we can play it around and we can now solve for the value of C or the speed of light. So now, let's play first around this equation. Okay, let's use this one. So we have B is equal to mu naught epsilon naught easy. Let's divide E here. Okay, let's divide E here. So we can have this one. So we have B over E is equal to mu naught epsilon naught C. Now, after that, let's use the Faraday's law. The value that we obtain on the Faraday's law. Let's use this equation for us to solve on this one. Let's use Faraday's law to solve what would be the corresponding value of B over E. Okay? Let's use this one. So we have E is equal to CB. Now let's divide B on both sides or the magnetic field. So what we have is E over B is equal to C. But we are concerned on looking for the B over E. So let's reciprocal. So what we have is B over E is equal to 1 over C. Therefore, B over E is also equal to 1 over C. So let's substitute it. We have 1 over C is equal to mu naught epsilon naught times C. Now, having said that, since we are concerned on finding the value of C, so let's multiply both sides to 1 over C. So we can cancel this one. So we have now 1 over C times 1 over C is 1 over c squared equals mu naught or the perme permeability of space times the permittivity of space and let's reciprocal since we are concerned for finding the value of c so we have now c squared is equal to 1 over mu naught times epsilon naught and let's get the square root of both sides so we have now c is equal to square the square root of 1 which is 1 over the square root of permeability of space times the permittivity of space now we already get the equation for the speed of light now it's time to check if it is the right equation for finding the value of the speed of light. Okay. Again, our equation we arrive or we derive is C is equal to 1 over square root of mu naught times epsilon naught. And the value for the permeability of space is this one. So we have this one. 4 pi times 10 raised to negative 7. And for the epsilon naught or the permittivity of space is we have 8.85 times 10 raised to negative 12. Column squared Newton meter squared. Okay, let's substitute that value. We have C equals 1 
over the square root of 4 pi times 10 raised to negative 7 newton ampere squared times 8.85 times 10 raised to negative 12 column squared column squared then newton meter squared and if we solve that using our calculator we get this value we have 3.00 times 10 raised to 8 meter per seconds so this is the value of the speed of light that's all for the discussion and hope you understand something thank you for listening